Hello, this is a review of the Hoover Zen Whisper Canister Vacuum Model SH4080. Now, it is a more quiet vacuum, although noisier with the brush attachment turned on, and it did an excellent cleaning job for me on my carpets and especially on my bare floors that was on par with my uh, Kenmore Progressive vacuum cleaner. And of course the proof is in what it picked up after just one cleaning with this vacuum. So I believe there's a lot of positives to the vacuum. It is uh, more maneuverable. Um, I like the way you can get at attachments with the hose. It has a retractable cord in the back. And overall I found to be a quite, a quite a decent vacuum cleaner. You'll get a um, floor attachment that's plenty large. You'll get a crevice tool. And the nice thing is about the crevice tool is it connects right on into uh, the handle here which can connect onto the power brush attachment. You can connect other attachments as well. So you get a brush attachment that you see here um, as well. And so you have your tools and then you have the power brush attachment that we see here. Now I wanted to give you a size comparison compared to my Kenmore Progressive to give you an idea that it does have a telescoping feature. So basically you can press this button and it'll zip all the way down. Um, but it was, before I uh, shortened it, it was the full height of my Kenmore Progressive. Now, one thing that you'll notice is width-wise, um, my Kenmore Progressive is a little bit wider than this. Now, this is a pro and a con, is yes, with a narrower space, you're gonna have to make maybe an extra pass or two. However, it was more nimble to fit into more locations. So, I really liked that um, you could go ahead and, you know, you could lay it nice and flat and get under more things that I couldn't get under with my other vacuum. Um, and then you can turn it. You see how it swivels and pivots right here? Now, some people point out it isn't a 90 degree pivot. It's like a 45 degree pivot. Uh, but this definitely helped it maneuver more easily into more locations. Um, so I definitely like that aspect of that. Um, and it did an excellent job cleaning for me. One thing I really liked was the fact that the power button to the brush attachment was right on the handle. So when you're switching between carpets and bare floors, it was really nice to have the button uh, right on the handle. So I was finding myself togg toggling it on and off all the time. Um, I really liked that aspect, whereas I had to go um, flip levers on my other vacuum cleaner, which was rather annoying. It was always easy to push down, but it was this is much easier to be at your thumb. Now, notice there's no power button um, on the handle. This is just the brush attachment's power button. The power for the actual vacuum cleaner is over here. It's just this left thing here. So basically, you know, you just go ahead and go like that, or press it with your hand. Um, it's easy enough to do, but what I found myself doing was actually just toggling this off and letting this motor run while I at least stopped the brush attachments while I stopped for a second. Now size wise the unit is smaller in pure volume than my Kenmore Progressive Vacuum Cleaner um, as we can see here it's nice and small but it obviously takes up more floor space being a canister style whereas you could just stand this guy up um, throw it in a closet to hug a wall. Now noise wise it is quieter than my Kenmore Progressive Vacuum uh, but it's not whisper quiet and it's louder with the brush attachment turned on so let's have a listen. And compare that to my Kenmore. Performance wise it did a great job on my medium pile carpet. I really was happy with it even without the pile size adjustment. I was really impressed with the amount of suction power that this had. It had as much suction power as my Kenmore Progressive Upright Vacuum. Now after every use you'll have to do two things. One, empty the dirt cup and two, remove the cylinder and wipe it out. So basically there's a button on here that makes it easily release. So you press the button and just lift up and it easily comes up. And then there's a button right here that you're going to hold it over a waste bin and release it. And now we're open and it dumped into the bin. Um, I had to stop the video due to, uh, to use two hands to press the button with one and shake it open with the other. And you just shake it out and we can see that the items have easily come out. 
and there really isn't anything else in here. Now you're supposed to um, stop and do one more thing at this point. You're supposed to twist and remove the red center cylinder and brush it off after every use. Pop it open, um, turn it counterclockwise, um, it lifts out like you can see here, shake it free, and of course your hand's going to get a little dirty. And go ahead and use the brush attachment they give you uh, to go ahead and brush it off a little bit. So you see how it sticks around the seals? So you're going to want to go ahead and brush that off, and then you can see you'll just push it back in and twist to lock into place. And now the dirt cup really easily gets placed right back on by popping it down and it's already back in place. Now every two months you're going to have to do a little bit more intensive cleaning and then all it just has to do with is cleaning out the filters that are in the inside which aren't a whole lot of work to do as well. So one is the one at the top of the dirt cup um, and you basically rotate this top section counterclockwise and it pops off. And this is a washable rinsable filter. You basically just pull this out, tap it off in the bin as well and then you can rinse it underwater, let it dry for 24 hours, and then put it back in and you're good to go. The other filter is going to be underneath the unit here. This is your HEPA filter. So if it's really easy to get at. Basically pull this door off and you have the filter here and they basically say every two months just tap this out gently inside the waste bin to knock off the debris. They say you don't have to replace these. Now be careful, uh, definitely open it over the bin, otherwise if you're not as careful like I just was, you're going to leave some lint over your carpet that then you're going to have to go clean up. So when you pull this out, make sure you're doing it over the bin, shake it off, um, brush it off, and then immediately put it back in. There's no way to easily park the unit, so like we showed before, it has the um, attachment on the back that you're supposed to attach the clip, but honestly, you know, you can get lucky and get it to stand in the unit, but most of the time, you know, I sit there and it just won't connect and there's no good way to set it down, so I often end up just setting it on the floor. So it doesn't quite park in a nice upright position, so I'll lean it against a wall when I need to. Now I really liked that it had a retractable cord that could nicely wind up inside as opposed to what I'd been used to is winding it around my Kenmore Progressive unit um, on the outside and it was serviceable for sure that way but it's nice that you have this cord and basically as you pull it out uh, there's going to be a yellow line that will tell you when you're almost all the way out and red to tell you uh, don't pull any further. So there's the yellow and if I pull a little bit further um, we'll see that there's the red line and it's really easy to retract but it does a pretty good job um, of winding up and there's plenty of cable I found to reach the distances that I need. Now I didn't really have a problem with the hose kinking. It kinked on me once. You basically just gotta watch how many times you wanna spin it around. And as you see, as I spin more, it starts to get a little bit more taut. So you basically don't wanna go in circles around the unit too many times. And then once you've um, going without twisting it too much, I really didn't have any problem at all. Now another thing I liked was the ease of access to being able to detach this and use attachments. So basically there's a button that you see here um, right on here, you press the button and it releases. Now, of course, that's just going to fall away, um, but it gives you a really easy to just go around and take this cord and be able to go around around corners, under the edge of couches, or something like that really fast. Uh, and I really liked that. Now, there is no height adjustment, like I said, like on other vacuum cleaners, you have your um, low, medium, high settings that you can turn down and set. And this one had no such settings on that. And if you look underneath, um, it really just has one setting and rides along the carpet. Um, it did a really good job picking up from my bare floors uh, because it hugs the floor really closely, whereas this one I can put on different settings. And it did a decent job, but this one picks up a really good job on my bare floors anyways, especially in my bathrooms. Now on carpet, um, I was surprised how good of a job it did on carpet like this. So this is about the height of my carpet that you see here. And I waited about three weeks between vacuuming and to try this vacuum cleaner. And it picked up everything that I had. And of course the proof is in what it managed to pick up through my house uh, from the vacuuming. Um, it did as good of a job as I found out of my existing vacuum cleaner. Weight wise, the unit is light, but not feather light. As we look here, it has a handle on the back. So basically you can lift it from this handle here. Um, and the unit is light enough, but definitely not feather light, but it's plenty to carry room to room and up the stairs. Now the handle isn't all that comfortable, but it's plenty sufficient. So it would have been nice if it had a rubber grip you know, on the bottom side and maybe a rounded cap on the, the top to give it a good feel. 